How's it going, guys? Welcome to the stream. It's been a while. I always say that. It's, uh, yeah. I miss doing a stream, even though I stress out myself so badly uh, every time I do one uh, or leading up to one that often I just don't stream. Um, so I don't really have a big plan for today. There's a bunch of little things. Um, let's just start with what's on my mind. This mess in the back uh, is because I'm moving and I'll be moving to a new apartment um, in the next month. I'll be moved into a new place within a month. And it's uh, we're downsizing a bit. So we're going from a full house to a three bedroom apartment in a different city. And that's kind of top of mind right now. And things will be a little weird. Things will be a little inconsistent with making content and stuff. Things for you guys to watch. Um, and yeah, I'll just try my best to be available for answering questions, one-on-one -on -one lessons, things like that. But there is a point where I'll have to completely dismantle my studio or I won't have internet or something like that. And, and uh, yeah, um, but I'll try to be here. Uh, on YouTube or on uh, by email or on the Facebook group and on the forum and stuff like that. Whenever I'm bored, I go to those places and I try to answer questions. Yeah, I'm kind of excited about setting up a new studio. So many different ways you can set up. And I've been in the process of getting rid of stuff that I don't need. I recently, just yesterday, I sold my monitor station, which is uh, the Personas monitor station V2, which I love the thing, but I haven't used it in probably a year and a half, maybe longer, since I sold my uh, Yamaha speakers. Shit, it must have been like three years or something. <laughs> but I was using it just to have an extra monitor volume, and it was just completely redundant uh, when I bought the audio fuse, other than having a button to turn off the subwoofer. I didn't really need it. Finally got to have someone interested enough to pick it up yesterday. And I didn't make much money, but I did also get a um, a delay pedal that kind of curious to check out. Maybe we'll do that today. This was partial trade on that um, monitor station. It's It seems similar to the TC Electronic uh, flashback that I have. I'll have to rip that off my pedal board. So they seem similar. Similar like mode switch with multiple uh, types of delays. There's a looper built in, stuff like that. I haven't even plugged it in yet. I'm sure it works, but I have no idea what it sounds like. I didn't even search for it. I just either felt like, uh, felt like I needed to do that like in a video or on stream to uh, make that interesting. Got a question from Mark. Hey, John, is there a way to isolate files for a song, reorganize a messy session, or messy and unorganized system? I did do a video on that. I don't know if I covered everything, but uh, let me try to look that up here. So uh, after Mark asked that question, John Haas asked, are your projects in uh, each in their own folder? And then Mark replied, some are in a folder, but many are just saved as just uh, save project as and filled in whatever Reaper prioritize, prioritizes. Okay, I'm I'm not sure what word you were going for there, but um, okay. So I made a video called "Essential File Management for Reaper." the The thumbnail says the defaults are all wrong, and in that one I explain a setup that prevents you from losing any files. Uh, but that's only part of what you were asking, and I'll I'll put that up on on screen here. So this video here gets you set up for success. New projects going forward, you won't lose any files. All right. So next, how do you fix? It's this other video, how to fix your disorganized projects. I believe this covers everything, but it's been a little while since I've watched it. Talks about the save as function. It talks about um, Project Media Effects Bay. 
which is a great way of after you do a, or before you do a save as something like that, you can um, copy everything over. And if you've already gone through those videos and there's still a question, happy to cover that as well, or by email or something like that. I was doing a one-on-one -on -one session with a, uh, an older gentleman who had uh, this kind of problem every time. So every time you, uh, I'll show you here. Every time you hit save on a project, it brings up this window. And if you do create subdirectory and project and save, it's going to make a folder for that. But then the next time you save or do a save as in a different project, it's gonna open up this window as the last location that you had saved into. So most likely that's going to be your last project. So you're saving a project with a subdirectory inside of a project. And before long, he had 25 folders deep with projects inside of projects. And then about half an hour of our session was just me remote controlling and moving files over to organized locations. It was frustrating. One thing you can do to prevent this from doing that folder inside of a folder thing is setting up your default save path. Preferences, paths, default path to save new projects. This is empty by default, which is just going to default to the last place used. If you just put in, like, I've got a dedicated hard drive for projects, so when I hit save in a project, it opens up this, and this is just the root of my work drive. So I could change this to e slash um, Reaper projects, hit apply. Now when I hit save, it's gonna default to inside my Reaper projects folder. If you don't have, so just putting in a folder here, any path is going to prevent that folder inside of folder thing. And I think that's a fairly common issue people have. So uh, because I'm working on a mix of video and audio projects, I'm just going to save it like that. MBI says, Sheps or JT, I'm here. Oh, uh, I guess Sheps is live as well. I didn't know that. I appreciate you choosing me instead of him. Hi, John. I found a site with some free GUI-less plugins, VST plugins, Air Windows, and wondered if you had used them. I think I tried them when they first came out, but I'm not, I'm, I definitely uh, am not a user of his plugins. Uh, my friend Tiki um, actually did a uh, an article for Reaper blog uh, about this. If you search for Air Windows on my site, you'll see uh, an article about four four uh, plugins or series of plugins from Air Windows that are worth checking out. Other than that, I have no experience with them. I'm definitely put off by the lack of UI. Um, I know that he could probably make a great UI for it. There's there's lots of reasons to have feedback and um, you know make your plugins look different than everything else and have a unique visual style. But it's his choice, and he's got hundreds of plugins now, so I don't. It, to me, it's intim intimidating to get into that sort of system that uh, the Air Windows has because there's just so many plugins. So, um, but they are good, as far as I know. John Haas has a question: Consolidate media export. Is there a way to configure the file names like you can with Render to not have dash consolidated appended? Uh, I rarely use that function. I would say no. I don't think there is a way to. At, uh, not use the suffix. Let me open up a recent project and hopefully we don't crash the stream again like last time. So instead of using consolidate, I always just select all the tracks and glue them. And that's, and to me, that's always been the best way to manage that. So I've got, you can see here lots of edits on these drums. And if I just run the glue action, it's going to create new files, um, and they're going to be for the length of the project. Um, or not the length of the project, but the length of the last item on there. And in this case, they start right at zero. If your project's 
don't start at zero. You can just put all of your tracks in record arm and just record for like a second at the uh, at the start, just so that there is some sort of audio there. Um, I've got a do have a video on exporting tracks for mixing uh, that covers that. But yeah, I don't use the actual consolidate export function. It, it's a little unclear with this what stage things uh, come through. Like, do you get audio from or effects from the track? Uh, do you get the volumes? Anything like that? I don't think you do, but I'm not 100% sure. So, and that's one of the reasons I don't like to use this. We do also have the um, selected tracks via master. And that would be another way of consolidating. But this is post effects, post um, volume. So you got to be very careful about which method you're using. I like glue for audio tracks that are like edited audio. I like stems if I want to have the effects in the mixer settings. Um, you need stems or the selected tracks for um, virtual instruments. But yeah, it, it's going to add that suffix, and you'll you'll just have to um, batch rename. On Windows, I found this app, Power Toys for Windows. It adds a lot of really cool stuff. But Power Rename basically gets you the kind of rename functions that are in in the Mac, but kind of you know in a more Windows like way. Um, but it's pretty cool. So I I couldn't live without that right now. Tower Studio, talking about file management, how do you, or do you know a way to render several projects without having to open them in Reaper and adding them to the render queue? You know, that's probably going to be the easiest way to do it. There is, um, there is like a command line sort of thing. You can script it outside of Reaper and you can make like Reaper run without the UI and render. But I think just doing it manually is probably the safer way you just so you know that the project loads pr correctly and all that kind of stuff um the batch queue is already saving you hours i feel like so how to select the media item without changing the playback marker during playback okay so i'll just put a couple items here so this question was from, I lost it already, Robert Miller. It's playing, if I click in the ruler, it'll jump. If I click in an empty area, it will jump. But if I click on the item itself, it's not going to jump. It will move my edit cursor, though. And if you don't want to move your edit cursor, you need an action like, um, like in my recent video, um, select under mouse, I think it was called. So you want this video, advanced editing, select under mouse. It's a bit too much stuff to cover right now, but, um, but yeah, I have some custom shortcuts that allow you to select, cut, paste, and stuff like that um, without affecting playback. So, well, I mean, paste would... Yeah, I can cut, I can copy, but paste would actually move the edit cursor. Uh, there are some options for moving the play cursor, though. Um, I don't feel like it's one that I've customized. Well, these are my playback settings here, uh, if you are interested and want to match that. So uh, there's the seeking changes or settings. So I'm one of those two pages. If if you're clicking on an item and it's changing the play position, that shouldn't be. And that would be either in mouse modifiers for like item. Select item and move edit cursor is the default. But you could also have that to like um, just select item. I find that that would slow me down too much. Some DAWs and video editors make you click in the uh, the ruler to select the, um, or to change the play position, um, and then click on an item only 
selects the item, but I really love clicking somewhere and having the play cursor move there or the edit cursor move there and having my video update, things like that. Is there a way to open two MIDI editors, piano roll at the same time? It's the only feature I miss from Keybase. Yeah, of course. There's lots of options for MIDI editor. Where is it? Okay, right, right here, this toggle. Can you see that? One MIDI, MIDI editor per media item, per track, or per project. I like it per project. Um, if you want multiple open at once, it's one of the other two uh, settings here. So if I do one editor per media item and apply, double click this and double click this, and I've got two in different tabs, and I can float them. I've got one here. I've got one here. So yeah, you can do that, definitely. Jacob, hey ya all. I've been using Reaper since I was a kid and used to listen to the Home Recording Show podcast. Holy hot dang, it's good to see you streaming, my guy. Thanks, Jacob. Good to have you here. Um, so maybe you'll find it, you'll get a kick out of this. I was um, going through my stuff in the basement and I found this trophy. Yeah, my camera tastefully blurred my butt crack, I think. Awesome. Uh, so this trophy, best home recording podcast, home recording show, 200 episodes. Yeah, so a fan of the show sent this to me and Ryan, and I, uh, come on. I think I'm going to keep it for a few more years. Nope. Not recording. Come on. I just wanted to focus. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah, when we used to podcast all the time, it was it was pretty cool, but we never really had like I don't know. We we get emails and people mentioning all the time that like how the the podcast really helped them and you know, they listen to it all the time and they'll listen to all 250 or 60 episodes like over and over again. Um, I'm out of focus, aren't I? Come on. This camera sometimes, sometimes the autofocus works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm, I'm definitely out of focus right now. Come on. There it is. <laughs> Opening two mixers at the same time would be so awesome. Well, the option you have is this mixer and scripts. So there's Hata Mixer. Um, which gives you this secondary mixer. There, there's lots of interesting things you can do with it but it is not a system that I use. What I would really like is two video windows. Like, think about having a um, one mix or one video window. Why did I do that? Like this, where you've got the video window in the top right, you know, so you can do your edit and stuff and have that reference. Doing voiceover, or ADR or something like that. You want to have a full screen video for your your uh, the talent. So there's no way to do that um, right now. You would need to have two screens and uh, no three screens or like two screens and a projector, and then one of them just has full screen video window, and you duplicate it to the projector or the third screen. It would be cool to have just two video windows. I think Reaper could just could probably handle that pretty well. Using SWS extensions and repack functions, one thing I don't understand is why cannot these two just live together? You always have to download them separately upon new installation. They're created by different people. Well, they're both kind of managed by Christian now. I guess because they were created by different people, they have totally different separate code. SWS is compiled C++. Repack is compiled, or the extension, but then everything else is um, uncompiled, Lua, and, and things like that. So Repack could manage SWS 
installation, but you'd still need to restart Reaper. But I don't know. I think an auto update could be possible at some point. I think it's just because there's so many different people working on that. I think Tim still has to verify everything before an update goes out. And that's why SWS is like once a year update and Repack is, uh, it can be updated every day depending on how many people are updating their scripts. Is it true that you're doing all of this without getting paid from Kakos? If so, thank you even more for everything. Yeah, I, I don't work for them, but they've been very friendly and helpful uh, at times. So um, I think it's a good deal. Um, you know, they don't prevent me from like using the word Reaper or using the their logo, things like that. They never stopped me from doing that. They never stopped me from talking about any particular topic or anything like that. Um, but I don't really like share anything, any secrets or anything. Um, you know, anything that's like on the pre-release forum, I, I don't talk about in videos or I don't show it. I brought a lot of people to Reaper. And I do different stuff from Kenny. So Kenny does work for them, but I don't. And always been independent uh, and suits me fine. So you guys pay me through watching the videos by buying the courses that are for sale. Uh, I think because I think I have a lot of benefits of being able to like cover different topics and do more personalized things for you guys because I'm independent. So. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with how it is, but you know there could be one one internet scandal or something, some bad tweet, some bad take on something, and then everyone stops watching. And I think if the uh, YouTube channel like suddenly got three strikes and I was I was uh, off the platform, I would probably take a little break and then I don't know, just post videos on my website or something like that. I don't know. I can't see that happening. There's no reason for that. How do you keep track or remember the new functions that Reaper releases in insane rhythm? Or do you, like me, discover something awesome and forget about it two days later? That is true. Uh, if I didn't make the update videos, then I would definitely lose track of all the stuff. And often it's like a, a mad scramble to, to download the update um, right before release and then learn everything so that I can make a video on release day. And then sometimes I get things wrong. So there's a couple things in the last video I got wrong. Oh, well, <laughs> not the end of the world. It's all good. But yeah, I definitely forget stuff if I'm not using it regularly. There's so many great scripts from the community that I've just seen the name and I've never checked out or JS plugins or extensions like um, the Ubershell um, API stuff. Um, it seems very powerful, but I have never put any effort into learning it. But yeah, I really should. It's all just a matter of using the stuff. If you look at my custom action list, there's so much stuff here. There's, there's like 200... <laughs> things that I have no memory of making just because I don't use them every day. And uh, some of them may have been shared from another user, but a lot of stuff like custom glue. What the, why did I make that? All kinds of things that they were important at one point and now I've completely forgot why because they were not assigned to a key. And yeah, I just forgot about them. Why item take volume envelope doesn't loop when you loop the item? Hey, that's a good question. And I have no idea why that doesn't happen. I never noticed it, actually. Um, you might want to move things to automation items if possible. I think that probably should. There's a bit of a difference between take volume because take is for the contents within an item and there can be multiple takes, each with their own elements or uh, envelopes. Looping a section of, the, of that item repeats the items and the takes, but I don't think it, it doesn't repeat the automation. I, yeah, I think that probably should. That's a, yeah, that's a really great find. I never even thought of that. 
Felix says, I'm using the Reaper 6 default theme. I'd like to have some frames around my toolbar buttons. Do I have to change my theme for that? Yeah, so like my theme, I've got frames around my icons. I want to zoom in more, but it's going to mess up my, uh, my setup. It's going to mess up my screen capture a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you change one thing about the theme, it's now not the default theme and certain things will start breaking. So you kind of can't just change one thing. Uh, and yeah, if you modify like the default theme, it will get lost when you update. Um, the actual thing is, I think it's a composite toolbar overlay that you can use to um, overlay a frame. You, d you definitely don't have to edit every single toolbar button. Um, there's also toolbar blank, maybe that, could be that one. So that's what mine looks like. Um, and that one, not sure what folder that's in. But yeah, it's possible, but that is a custom theme. Changing that one thing makes it a custom theme and you have to like modify the, um, modify the RT config and the, the theme script and all kinds of stuff. Okay, question from Aaron. I have a problem with Reaper. I saw a lot of videos on YouTube when you press the MIDI keyboard, it triggers the virtual keyboard. And I saw pressed keys on the Reaper. That doesn't on my Reaper. All right, let's go through the steps of setting up a virtual MIDI keyboard and let's just start fresh. So I've got a track here. I'll open up the, you know what? The fastest way to do this is actually different. So insert virtual instrument on a new track. You right click or go through the track menu. Insert virtual instrument. You choose your instrument. Let's just take recent. Okay. Ignoring the color, it sets up all this other stuff for you. So the track is record armed. It's monitor enabled. It's renamed for the instrument. It loads the instrument and it chooses a MIDI input. So if you're not seeing the virtual MIDI keyboard um, animating like, like in, um, in the videos, then it's because of that. So, so it lights up when, I'm, when this window's focus and I press a key, it lights up, I hear the sound and in the MIDI editor. So it should light up both in the keyboard and in the piano roll. All right, I hope that covers it. Uh, basically, if you're not seeing that happen, then either it's not record armed or it's not monitor enabled. And you can see all the options here if you right click. Or you don't have the MIDI input, either on all MIDI or virtual keyboard. One of those three things. Christopher asks, what's your second favorite DAW? Um, I don't know. I don't really use anything else. Isotope RX, I guess, would be my second choice. I think you have to have Reaper and it can do 99% of things. But if, we, if you want a destructive edit, then Isotope RX is very good. I don't know. I used to use Audacity a lot. I started out with Magic's Music Studio or something like that. I bought it from Radio Shack for like $15 on a CD. And like, it was terrible. But also I didn't have an audio interface. So it was like just impossible to get a good sound from it to like record guitar through a uh, 3.5 millimeter input jack, all that kind of stuff. It's like, I knew nothing at the time. I briefly used Crystal Audio Engine. I own FL Studio, uh, Producer Edition, and I've been using that since, I don't even know, 2002 maybe, something like that. That would probably be like, I would say that's probably where I started with music making, but like back then you couldn't record into it. 
you can only make songs from samples and synths. So that's kind of where I started. I went to school and they taught us Pro Tools and a little bit of Logic, um, Logic 7, I think it was, when you still had to use a dongle. The app would shut off if you unplug the dongle. Uh, we also had Cubase S, it was either like SE or SX back then. Uh, and Pro Tools 6.4 is when I got into that. And I kept up with Pro Tools until like Pro Tools 8. So I had Pro Tools 8 for like a year, and then I switched to Reaper. Can I explain the pan modes in Reaper 6? I guess I can. I use Stereo Pan because it gives me a balance control and a width knob. I really like that. I find the width knob very helpful for either making something mono, making something slightly narrower in the verses, or reversing the pan by setting it to minus 100. Stereo balance mono pan is the default. Um, and it's just a single knob that shifts the balance, whether you have mono or stereo sources. Dual pan gives you two knobs, which is more like Pro Tools on a stereo track, where you have independent control of the left and right. But in most, I, I don't think there's any situation where you wouldn't like get the same result as uh, with stereo pan using dual pan and the old one just don't use it so there's really only three pan modes and I would highly recommend everyone switch to stereo pan and I don't use any pan law options don't like them stereo pan or bust yeah what is causing my reaper exe file to continue running in the background when I shut down could be a script running I mean sometimes it's like when you quit, it asks if you want to save, but that little pop-up is on a second screen or something like that. If you have the session, a project open, when you quit, it could be that it's not unloading it correctly. Um, I don't know. It, it kind of, it shouldn't do that, of course. I would guess it's an a extension, a script, or a plugin that's conflicting. If it's like a long-standing issue, definitely report it. When will Reaper embrace real-time playing? I don't know what you mean by that. Like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> Can you talk about export, import, all configurations? I will update to 6.1.4. Yeah, so when I have a new version, I just install directly over top. So I just run the installer, and you shouldn't need to do anything else. Built-in export function, I rarely use. I just copy everything in the folder and move it to another computer or anything like that. I think I forgot what the question was halfway through that answer. I don't think you need to back up anything or export anything before upgrades. I worry about things like um, installing someone's config file, someone else's config file, uh, along with a, th a theme, because that can also change a lot of your settings, um, should avoid you should make a backup in that case. You should have backups of your system in general, um, but I don't take any special steps for that. If I if there's a new version that's completely different than the old version, then I'll do a portable install for a little while, but usually I just merge everything. I hate to lose like uh, 10 years of customization. Joshua Paul says, I mix live for a live stream church audio pre-fader listen would give me an opportunity to listen individually without soloing in master could be available as some sort of routing please suggest yes i explained this once in an email that obviously i can't show you but let's see if i can quickly kind of show you this so let's say i've got um i don't know 12 tracks and in here, I've got all these tracks going to the master on main out one and two, and I can set up a send to hardware out um, three, four. So now this track is going to my headphones also. And so I just duplicate this, this send can I can I duplicate them this way? No. 
Anyways. So you just make your send, and then you can um, shift click them to bypass. And then if you want to free fade or listen, you just shift click and now you're listening to track eight, in, only in your headphones. That's the only like pre fade or listen function that I know of. Pretty sure that's a, essentially what pre pre fader listen does in a, on a console. Like it's just kind of like it splits the signal and sends it directly to a specific bus. We'll do this again tomorrow, same time. Uh, um, let's do that thank you screen again one more time. Thanking my patrons. And then we'll do this one. Thanks for watching. And I'll, I'll go. Goodbye, guys. Thank you so much.